channel and the new series on my channel called Tea Time with Selena for obvious reasons. So I am so excited to make this video. Finally, I've been setting up seriously for like three hours. I'm done. Uh, I'm so... Uh, I think. No, no. <laughs> As I said, yes. Seriously, someone does not want me to do this video because I've been setting up for like three hours and the battery didn't work, the setup didn't work, the light didn't work. Everything has just been a fail so far and now I got something in my eye. Of course, why not? Because that's just how life is. Ah! And my glasses broke, but I glued them back together. So yeah, I am super excited about this video. I've been wanting to do this for so long and I have a couple of ideas on what I want to talk about. So this is not necessarily just going to be about nails. Uh, this first episode is going to be about nails though, but later it could be about pretty much anything. I have actually a ghost story uh, to tell you a little bit later. And if you hear something biting on the covers, it's Martin, uh, so he's here as well. Maybe he'll come up here and say hi to you guys before we say goodbye. So I have a rule. If you're watching this video, because it's tea time with Selena, I want you to go and get a cup of tea and then come back and then we're gonna do the video, okay? <laughs> So uh, my tea right now is, I'm actually, this is one of my favorites right now. I am totally obsessed about matcha teas. This is uh, some milk together with the matcha powder and then water of course and some honey. And it's green and it's just so pretty and it's so good. And this mug, I have so many mugs, you wouldn't even believe me. Kristen hates me because I take up all the space in the kitchen. but. This mug is very special. I do have a video on this mug though because I bought this at the Timberline Lodge in Oregon and it's actually the same hotel as they filmed for The Shining. And for those of you who have watched me for a while, you know that I'm like a horror fan. I love horror movies like crazy. So Jim McConnell, the owner of Light Elegance, actually took me and my friends up to the Timberline Lodge where we got to see the hotel where they actually filmed the movie. Well, they actually just used the outside of that hotel in the movie. So whenever they're like flying on around the hotel, or whatever, that's from that hotel. But the rest is from a studio set. But it was really awesome. I'm gonna brag about this. Like when I'm like 95 on my deathbed, I'm gonna be talking about this and it's gonna be one of the highlights of my life. Another thing that I wanted to talk to you about before we move on to this story for today is actually this plaid blanket. I don't know what you want to call it, but just take a look at it. So I'm kind of a spontaneous type of person. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was browsing around on internet and especially on Instagram and I am a sucker for interior design. Oh yes. Oh, I got it. I got it. Oh, someone loves me. Yes, I know. Oh good. Tuck. So I'm a sucker for interior design and name Martin. And I've seen these blankets like everywhere on Instagram and I just went obsessed with it. And then I found a girl called Sissy. She's a Swedish nail technician actually, which is awesome. And she hand make all these. She has like pillows and you can use them as just like a decoration. I have it on like in my couch and on my bed. It is just amazing. It is huge. This is like the, the it's not the biggest one but it's one step under that. So it's 120, no, 110 times 200 center, centimeters. So it's pretty big. It is so heavy and this is called um uh, I, I looked it up. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, but it's called mer merino wool. Merino ull in Swedish. Merino wool. So it's Meh. a type of cheap. Mer merino cheap. <laughs> the important thing here is that, I need to look up this word, but they are not using the technique mulesing. It's when you are like shaving a piece of the skin like at the back to keep mosquitoes and flies out of the fur wool. Well, it's not very pleasant for the animals and these merino sheeps are not 
being exposed to that they just shave this off they actually need to shave the wool off at least once a year because it's growing so fast and she has like a hundred different colors to choose from this is called duck egg i am obsessed with this color she is a really 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 sweet girl and she offered me to give you a discount so i'm gonna give you all the information like around here or somewhere on the screen uh with the website the discount and everything Everything you need to know so take a look at the website if uh, the website is not working because I know it's working in progress if it's not working just go to that website and pick out your size and color and then you can buy it later when you get my 20% off so this is a really really good Christmas present I mean who wouldn't be obsessed with this for Christmas it is I mean oh mm, yeah. anyways I want to know what kind of tea you are drinking with this video so you need to comment in the comment section below and uh, before we start cheers okay <clears throat> here's my confession this is actually gonna be kind of a confession video I haven't told I, I have told a couple of people but this is the first time I'm actually going public with this <laughs> Ah, uh, it's a story and I'm gonna tell you all about it. So we need to rewind this a little bit Two years ago, I entered a nail competition called next top nail artist and it is Arranged by an American nail magazine called nails magazine. They kind of describe it as top model but with nails, so it's like a, it's like an online reality nail show. So you do everything online. So people can actually enter from like all around the world, which is pretty cool. <sighs> what you do is that you send your entry video in where you talk about yourself. You need to send them like a couple of pictures and like a short essay on something, blah, blah, blah. I don't really remember, but anyways, that Entry video is actually still up on my channel, so I'll just um, put it up here. Hi, my name is Selena Ryden. I'm 30 years old and I'm from Stockholm, Sweden. It's a little bit cringy, but if you want to be entertained, go ahead. It's a little bit too cringy for me to watch now. I wish that I could actually remove it from my channel, but at the same time, you know, it's like history. And then they pick out top 24. And then you start to get pre-challenges. So you get a challenge each week, but for, to start out with, you get a pre-challenge and then they uh, pick out top 12 from top 24 to top 12. And then from top 12, that's kind of where everything starts. Maybe it's a step between. I know we had two pre-challenges. Anyways, I was in the top 12 and from there every week you get a new challenge and every week it's like a new sponsor from like a nail brand. I actually need to uh, walk you through kind of what happened in the beginning so you can understand what was going on later. But first challenge was by Dashing Diva, I think. And we were supposed to do like a superstar set. I did a set inspired by Lady Gaga and I won that challenge. And I was shocked. That was like the biggest thing that had ever happened to me, ever. This was actually season three and I watched like the sea. Oh no, I, I didn't actually watch any of the other seasons, but I watched them like after <laughs> they were done. So I have watched those videos like a million times and those people like Lexi Martone and Lauren Weirman and all those people, they were like gods, like nail gods. And then I won that challenge. It, it, I know, I remember that I was uh, out having dinner with some friends and when I found out and I more or less just started to cry almost. I had, I had to cool it down, but inside I was crying of happiness. How this works is that they pick out top three for each week. So you get a top three and a bottom three. And then after that, uh, later, like a couple of hours later, you get to know the winner and then the person that is eliminated. Each week someone was getting eliminated and then, you know, the rest moved on to the next challenge. So I went on and the second challenge was won by Sarah Elmas, Get Buff Nails. If you don't know Sarah, then you are probably not a nail tag, first of all. But uh, then you have probably also been living under a rock uh, for the past hundred years. Uh, she's amazing. If you haven't seen her work, you need to go and check it out like 
now. She was also in my season and she won the second challenge. Weird things started to happen for me at least after the first challenge and after I won because then some people at the same season they were really upset. They were saying that you know I was cheating, the judges were cheating, everyone was cheating, I didn't deserve to win, blah 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 blah. blah, blah. I was pretty hurt by that because I had worked my butt off and it was such a huge deal for me to win that challenge. And then the second challenge was won by Sarah. And I saw that they were doing the same thing with her. So like the focus went from me to her and they were saying like the exact same thing. It was cheating, it was blah, 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 vomit. So I contacted her. And after that, we were talking online every day, probably for the next year. You know, she's still one of my best nail friends. She lives in Australia, which is pretty sucky. But she's actually coming here in January, which is awesome. So she's gonna come here and visit me in Sweden. And then she's gonna move on to, I think it's like UK or something. Not that important. I mean, <laughs> as long as she comes to see me first. <laughs> We started talking and uh, we were such an amazing support for each other. I don't think I would have made it to the end if it wasn't for her. Winnie, who won, she kind of came into our little group like right before the top three. We really wanted her to be in the top three. Uh, so we started talking a little bit and uh, luckily, you know, it ended up us three being uh, top three which is another story but anyways so the weeks went on and on I was getting more and more tired people really don't understand how much work that goes into NTNA you're working every day every week every second weekends you're never free I was working 24 7 for so many weeks and I was exhausted so I think that this was like could have been like week eight or something I don't know it was around Halloween. Yeah, it should have been like week eight or something and I had been hanging on for so long and I put my soul into this competition. I... <laughs> Oh my god, I have, I actually have a playlist with all of the videos that I did. So for every challenge you had to do a video or you had to do like a step-by-step -step thing that you had to upload on another page. But I think I have a video for almost every single challenge. I can't believe that I'm actually telling you this, but I'm gonna tell you now. So it was, I think it was week eight and we got the email from Beth and from Nails Magazine and where she explains like kind of what you are supposed to do for this challenge, um, the rules, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so the theme was rock horror. And I was like, yeah, well, horror makes sense because it's like Halloween time, so I get that, but where is rock coming into this? Like rock horror, like I was thinking, you know, like rock music, rock mm -hmm. horror. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just go with the flow then. Do you think that if I continue doing this, People will eventually start commenting on that in the comment section. So the thing with me with this challenge is that I wanted to have everything done as soon as I possibly could. Uh, just to maintain my normal routines like with work and everything because I didn't cut down on work at all. I still worked full time at the salon. I did my challenges like every evening and then every weekend. So I always wanted to stay like one step ahead all the time. So we actually got the, the next challenge to us before we knew if we were gonna make it to the next challenge. So I always started with the next one before I even knew if I, if I was gonna make it. I was working with uh, that challenge. I got one of my nail friends, uh, Lynn, uh, Swedish nail tech. She modeled for me and we were gonna do it on, like, a, it, it was a full set and we had to include, like, a glow-in-the-dark component and then it had to be, like, black, red, and white. So I started to do this set. Horror freak fan, I love horror. I love Tim Burton, Beetlejuice, all that jazz. <laughs> So, of course, I figured that's gonna be my inspiration, and then I do like rock. I mean, I have a soft spot for 80s rock, so yeah. I thought that this 
challenge would fit me pretty well. So I wasn't that nervous actually and I mean they were awesome. I was so happy with this set when I was done. I was like no way that I'm gonna be eliminated because of this and even if I'm being eliminated I would still be so proud of that set because it was so me and uh, we did like a bird skull, we did checkered patterns, normal skulls, but they were actually one of my favorite sets for the whole competition I think. So uh, I was done, I had filmed everything and I was ready to uh, edit the video. By that time we actually had like a little, it was like a Facebook conversation thing uh, with the people in uh, our season and I think it was, I think it was Haley, Haley you saved my ass, who said something about a movie, like uh, blah 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 something movie movie with this challenge and I was like, what movie are you talking about? If you hear sniffing in the air, it's actually Martin. There was a fly in here and he hates flies. So he's sniffing out that sucker right now. See if he can eat it or something. And then, okay, bye. Martin just left. He's on a hunt for that fly. So I went back to the email and I read it again. And my heart sank to the bottom of the Pacific ocean. My head was spinning and it felt like I was drowning. It didn't say rock horror. It said Rocky Horror Picture Show. First of all, I've never ever ever heard of that movie. And yes, I am embarrassed to say that because I am such a horror freak, so I should know. But I didn't. So I panicked. I freaked. I didn't know what to do. The set was already done. The footage was there, I had no time in hell. Like that I was actually gonna, you know, redo everything, do a new set, plan it out to start with, and then film that and edit it well. It was just too much. So I had no choice. I had to work with what I had. So taking the footage from the set that I did, looking through it, then I watched Rocky Horror Picture Show probably five times in a row. I learned every little expression. I looked for details in the background that I could pick and then kind of slap onto the nails. So for example, I had checkered patterns onto the nails. So I had to go through the entire movie looking for checkered patterns in the movie. I didn't care how far-fetched it was. I had to find checkered pattern. I had to combine stuff to make it in some way logical but very creative. Checkered pattern, I found like it was something behind someone's bed, like uh, the, the window or something and then uh, what else? They had like a grandfather clock uh, with a skull in it. I had three small skulls. So I said that it was uh, inspired by that. I had the bird skull, which was like, how the frick am I gonna get this into my video and make it logical? But I did. I told them that it was the main character and because of his beautiful singing voice, I needed to portray him as this bird skull uh, because it was a Halloween set. I made these <laughs> extremely, yeah, far-fetched comparisons from my set to the movie but that's the thing with me I know how to kind of combine stuff to make it a story so I just did it because I had no choice that was what I had to do I just I just had to survive this so I put together this video and I figured if I'm gonna make it this is my time to fake it fake it till I make it has always been a motto of mine and now it was the motto putting me to the test. So I faked it. Oh god, how much I faked it. I did a video and I told myself, girl, this video has to be the best one you've ever done. So I need to convince people that I'm a Rocky Horror Picture Show freak. This is my life. I live for this movie. I know every single detail. I know every single character. I know the lines. I know every single thing with this movie. Fake it till you make it. So I did. I dressed up like some kind of medieval plague uh, person with a long mask with this uh, like long nose and like a hat. Greetings, Earthlings. And I was reading from actually my, my grandfather's dad's Bible 
in Chinese because my grandfather was actually born in China because his parents were missionaries but they were Swedish but they were teaching about like Christianity in China so I actually have that Bible from him so I put it upside down for some reason because it, it looked better I pretended that I was reading off of this Bible storybook if you watch the video you can actually see the little uh chinese symbols at the bottom so i dressed up i did all that then i went nuts with my voiceover i was comparing the tiniest little detail to the movie to add even more rock feeling to the design i was inspired by the dancer's clothes and created a black hat with some white details and i was being extremely convincing about the whole thing. I sent in the video and description and the pictures and everything and I couldn't stop crying. I went into a full meltdown. I was uber convinced that this was actually going to be the week that I was going to be eliminated and the worst part of it all was that I knew it was because of me because I didn't read it properly. It was almost kind of a little bit unfair because I am Swedish. So doing this all in a different language and kind of misread the email. I know that it's like a crazy situation, but anyways, that was kind of how I felt. Like it was, it was just so unfair, but it was, <laughs> it, it all came down to me. I was the one being stupid. And I mean, I wouldn't actually say that this was cheating. Uh, because I put myself in this situation. It didn't say how you were supposed to do this. I just made it a billion times worse or harder for myself to do it. And if you want to do that, just go right ahead. I did it and I had to clean it up. I started to talk to Sarah like crazy. Uh, you know, I told her about the whole thing and I was like, I know that this is my week, I'm gonna be eliminated, and this sucks, this sucks so hard. I was a wreck for the next couple of days, you know, one panic attack after another. So you can, you can, you can tell that I put a lot of effort and energy and love into this competition. You know, being eliminated because of a stupid thing like that when you put your whole world and energy and time into something, ugh, that was the worst feeling ever. Time went on and the day came when they were gonna announce the top three and the bottom three. And I was refreshing that freaking page like forever. Okay, bye again. And then it came up and I was in the top three. And I could not believe my eyes. I didn't know how that happened. In some way it did happen. And I felt like, did I really just trick everyone? <laughs> but I didn't really trick everyone. I mean, I didn't, trick anyone i didn't cheat well i tricked people but not really i mean it was it was my fault that was probably one of the best moments in my life i knew that i was safe for another week and i didn't have to blame myself for getting eliminated because of a stupid thing like that after we got that announcement i didn't really think much of it i was like well whatever Who, whoever's gonna win this is you know it's gonna be someone else later in the evening they announced it then i looked at the website and I was the winner <laughs> I won the freaking challenge with my freaking set and the freaking video I, I'm not gonna say that I, I didn't deserve it I probably deserved it more than anyone because god damn it I put so much work into that video I moved on to the next challenge and ended up in the top three together with Sarah and Winnie and uh, of course I told Winnie also about what happened later on they pretty much just laughed it off I mean it's 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 a crazy story it's been two years and it just proves that darn it I mean you can make it you can fake it till you make it and if you feel like things are just crumbling apart around you like you, you have no control you messed up don't give up just freaking do it and make sure that you fake it till you make it fake the shit out of it even if you feel like it's not possible that was my confession and my story about the NTNA and how I cheated to win. It was a super fun challenge uh, and I will never forget that moment or those moments and talking about it now I mean it's a really really funny story but now you all know. I will of course put the uh, video 
up here so you can watch the whole video and it's a lot more fun to watch it when you know the backstory so enjoy that have fun with it hopefully you like these kind of videos just me talking uh chatting with you guys please give me suggestions in the comment section as well together with the tea you're drinking what kind of topics you want to see in the future with tea time with selena and i do have that scary story that i want to tell you that is actually you know it's from my own life thank you so much for watching i love you so much cheers and I'll make sure that you get to say hi to Martin. I'll bring the uh, fly slayer up here just for a second so you can you can say bye and hi and everything. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, man, man. Ooh. <laughs> come, Martin, come. So, hey, there he is. And he's still on the hunt for that fly. I'm not gonna keep him occupied for too long. Okay, so yeah, he, he really wants to get go and grab that fly. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.